Grappling is used sparingly in most D&D campaigns, but today we're exploring the unhinged extremes of a grapple-only build, and the nightmare it can create for standalone bosses. For those who aren't familiar, grappling is the use of an attack to try to wrestle an enemy and hold them in place. It requires an athletics check from the grappler, and an opposed athletics or acrobatics check from the one being grappled. And as simple as this is, its consequences can be extreme in certain applications. So we have prepared yet another series of DM public service videos to illustrate just that. Let's begin with the groundwork that a player may lay in preparing for this build, enabling strategies like the nuclear lockdown and what we're calling the Mount Doom approach. Let's begin. Okay, for this one shot, we're going to start at level six. So what do you guys have in mind for your characters? I'll be a gnome bard. A gnome bard? Got it. I will try a high elf cleric. High elf cleric? Love it. I'll do a dwarven wizard. Dwarven wizard? Nice. And I'll do a half-orc fighter. A half-orc fighter? With one level in rogue. Okay, multi-classed. I'll take proficiency and expertise and athletics from rogue, and then I'll take the rune knight subclass from fighter. Okay, yeah, rune knight is a cool... And I'll take the grappler feat instead of an ability score increase at fighter level four. Okay, I'm not gonna ask, but I do have a feeling that this is going to be a shorter one-shot than I had anticipated. Before we show the fundamental use of a grapple-only build, you should be aware that most of the strategies that you are about to bear witness to are really only effective against single targets, at least most of the time. So while many of these strategies can cripple or in some cases even outright destroy a boss, they are far less effective against swarms or even small groups of enemies. With that in mind, let's now watch and see how this build can be used in its most basic form. And as the stone door slams shut behind you, the ground begins to shake. And emerging from the mass grave in this tomb is a flesh golem, but enhanced with plates of armor fused to their rotting skin and spikes sewed into their hands. So go ahead and roll for initiative. A few moments later. Okay, so you're up first. Good, so uh, I'm gonna start by using my bonus action to activate my Rune Knight ability called Giant's Might, which gives me advantage on strength checks, uh, makes me one size bigger, so I'm large now, and plus 1d6 to melee damage once per turn. Okay, so you swell in size and strength. Uh, now what? Uh, so then I wanna run up to the Flesh Golem guy, and I wanna use the first of my two attack actions to grapple him. So he needs to make an opposed athletics check. Okay, he's pretty strong, so that's a 21. Okay, so I roll with advantage from Giant's Might, and I get plus 9 to athletics after expertise, which I get for my one level in Rogue, uh, making my average athletics check at advantage a 22, but that's a 25. Okay, great, so he's grappled now, uh, but you still have one more attack, right? Yeah, and now that he's grappled, I have advantage on attacks against him from the grappler feet, so I attack with advantage, uh, it's a 22. Uh, yeah. And then because of Giant's Might, I get an extra 1d6, and because I have advantage, I also get sneak attack from my one level in Rogue, so that's another 1d6, so total that's 1d8 plus 2d6, and he's grappled. Okay. But now I'd like to action surge and use my second action to pin the Flesh Golem using my grappler feet. So that's another opposed athletics check, and a failure results in him, and me, being restrained. Wow. Yeah, that's a 15. Uh, that's a 27 here. So now he's pinned, which imposes the restrained condition on both him and myself. Restrained. So you both now have disadvantage on attacks, but also attacks against you have advantage? That's correct, but since we're both restrained, the advantages and disadvantage would cancel out when we attack each other. But if I have an ally within five feet of him, like our cleric here, I still get my sneak attack bonus once per turn, plus the extra 1d6 from Giant's Might, which is also once per turn. Right, okay. That's, that's great. This is gonna be fun. Yes, indeed. <laughs> As you can see, the basic use of the grappler build prevents the target from moving, while also making it more vulnerable to attacks from the entire party by subjecting it to the restrained condition. But what happens when you combine this basic strategy with certain spells and class abilities from other party members? Well, you get something that we call the nuclear lockdown. Let's see. As the rain pours down around you, you gaze up at this monstrosity of bone and bark, whose steps shake the very ground beneath your feet. This is a gargantuan creature, so he's too big to grapple, unfortunately. And as he lumbers towards you, you can tell that he intends to destroy you all. I'll say that you have one round to prepare before he's upon you. Well, actually, we do have a plan for this. Yeah, so a few minutes ago, I gave him a 
Bardic Inspiration die that's still active. So now I want to cast Bestow Curse on the monster. Okay, that's a Wisdom save, which he fails. Great, so now he has disadvantage on all strength checks and has to make a Wisdom saving throw each turn or just do nothing. Damn, okay. Uh, next is... You. Yeah, I would like to use my bonus action to use Giant's Might. Uh, same stuff as before. All right, I'm large. Get advantage on strength checks, uh, etc., etc. That's it for now. Okay, and you? I want to cast Enlarge on our fighter so that he's one size larger now. So that should mean that he's huge, I think. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, that does make me huge now, uh, which is just one size smaller than Gargantuan. And the rules of grapple do state that I can grapple a creature that's up to one size larger than me. I see. And Gargantuan is one size larger than huge, which I am now, which means that I can, by the rules, uh, grapple uh, that thing. And let me guess, you've got something to do with this as well. I'm just going to cast Guidance on him, that's all. Okay, well the monster is upon you now, but he rolled low in initiative, so you get to all take your turns first. I'm just gonna hold my action to attack once he's been grappled. Okay, and now it's... It's your turn. Yeah, so I want to run up to this guy, and I'm going to use my first attack to grapple him. Okay, so his strength is high, so he'll do athletics, but that's with disadvantage from the bestow curse. But hey, that's still a 27 on his opposed athletics check. Great, well, I roll with advantage from Giant's Might. Uh, then I add my Bardic Inspiration of 1d8. Uh, I get my Guidance of 1d4, uh, and that's plus 9 to athletics by default. So I get a 32, which is actually the average outcome for that situation, but it's still not too bad. So you just grappled a gargantuan monstrosity. That's correct. And then you're going to restrain him so that everyone has advantage on him. Uh, that's also correct, and he does have to use his action to try to escape. But also, if he fails his Bestow Curse Wisdom save, he could just waste an entire turn anyway. Now you're getting it. Oh, and whenever I'm not having to re-grapple or re-restrain him, I will be attacking with the damage bonus from the Enlarge spell, uh, and once per turn, an extra 2d6 from Giant's Might and Sneak Attack combined, assuming an ally is within five feet of him. Which there will be. Eventually. He's now very hurt, but so are you. So he uses his action to attack you, and... Oh, that's a crit. So he deals uh, 36 damage to you, which I assume means you're down. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, if you do recall, I do have Relentless Endurance from being a half-orc, so I dropped the 1 HP instead. Enough to get us through another round with advantage. You know, as annoying as this is, I can't help but be proud. Note that there are other ways for bosses or more powerful enemies to break free of restrained or grappled conditions. For example, spells like freedom of movement or abilities like teleportation. While the nuclear lockdown strategy is extremely effective against massive enemies, there is a way to modify this approach that allows you in certain environmental situations to outright eliminate an enemy that is medium or smaller. Be aware that this approach is highly circumstantial and should not be relied on. Instead, this should help illustrate the flexibility and multiple applications that a grapple-only build can provide. Which means it's now time to look at the Mount Doom approach. First, a brief word from our sponsor. Surprise, the sponsor is me. I send out an email digest every Saturday morning called the Arcane Almanac. It's full of short, fun activities and tidbits designed for nerds like you. We have Dice of the Week, unique NPCs, miniature choose-your-own-adventures that readers can vote on, riddles, recipes, and more being added all the time. It is completely free to join with just your email using the link in the description below. And while you're there, remember to like the video if you're enjoying it. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more stuff like it. Anyway, on to Mount Doom. So you stand on top of the floating platform held aloft above the volcano by ancient eldritch enchantments, and you stand face to face with the man responsible for so much destruction the Lord Commander of the Undead Guard, Necron Deadman. Okay, so I'm gonna save you, and I'm gonna save you some time here, and we're just gonna say that we're setting us up the same way we did with that gargantuan guy. It's true. Yeah, that's the plan. So now I'm huge from Enlarge and Giant's Might, uh, making me twice as big as the uh, Negroni Dead guy. Uh, he's got disadvantage on strength checks, I have advantage, etc., etc., bardic inspiration, guidance, yada, yada. Uh, okay. Okay, but let me ask you this. Um, how far away is the edge of this floating platform that we're on? Probably like 60 feet. It's pretty big. A and there's uh, lava below, like a whole volcano's worth? Yes. Okay, then once I have him grappled, instead of using the next action to pin him, I'm going to instead take the dash action and carry him over to the edge of the platform. Oh, God. 
Okay, so you can do that without speed penalty since he's two sizes smaller than you because he's medium and you're large. That's correct. And then once I arrive at the edge of the platform, I want to action surge to throw him off the side of the platform with a shove attack to push him five feet away from me, dropping my grapple for free as I do so. He rolled a 25. Uh, that beats mine. Great. Finally. So I use my extra attack to shove again since the shove action only replaces one of my attacks. And that's a nat 20. Okay, so he goes five feet over the edge and tumbles into the volcano. Uh, yeah, he's he's a goner. Good job, team. Yeah. A grapple-only build can afford extreme advantages in certain situations. And when coupled with other class abilities and spells, can allow a party to restrain a massive creature or move a medium or smaller one with very little trouble. But as I said before, this approach is most effective against single enemies. And the more extreme examples are very circumstantial. But as always, creative uses tend to yield the best results. How have you used grapple creatively in the past? Or what creative combinations have you seen other people use grapple for in games of Dungeons and Dragons. Feel free to share your own stories in the comments below, and we'll see you next time on future DM public service announcements.